Hello everyone, welcome to the Glory Room. I'm Prophetess Lou. Hope you all are having a blessed day. Before we get started, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. Thank you for the word today, Father God. We ask you today, Father God, to help us understand it. Help us to apply it to our lives, Father God. Help us to change and want to be molded by you, Father God. Father God, every day we submit ourselves to you, Father God, and we ask you to forgive us of any sins we've done. Father God, we pray that we didn't offend the Holy Spirit, and if we did, we ask you to forgive us. Father God, we ask you today, to Father God, to be with us as we go to work, as we go to school, wherever we are, Father God, be with us. Father God, we ask you to bless the ones that are hearing it and bless the ones that are reading it in Jesus' name. Amen. So our verse today is James 4 17 so who, whoever knows the right thing to do fails to do it for him it is a sin subject beginning and depending on God Christian truths I'm gonna say it and pause behind each one to give you opportunity to say it if you like I'm depending on God I'm starting to my day with God I'm devoted to God I'm living in the light read time is eight minutes and 31 seconds Many of us know the right thing to do and what to do, but we refuse to do it because we feel like it's our life. When we have this attitude, we'll never grow in God because we are pursuing our plans. We read, we read this week that Israel told God they were comfortable with their sins and they didn't want to change. And a lot of us are like this. But when we keep going back and forth between God and the world, we are thinking, I don't care what God has for me. I want this. I don't care what God thinks of this. I want that. And we have to stop being this way because this is killing us, uh, killing us spiritually. Some of us are so dead spiritually, we can't pray, we can't worship because we need to repent. John 15, 4, remain in me as I remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in vines. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. When we remain in God, repent and do as he say, we'll reduce fruit. But when we do what we want and fail to do what's right, the right things, we won't change. We can try to order every whatever it is ourselves. We can go to counseling, go to the gym, go to therapy. But if we aren't doing it in him, if we don't depend on him, if we are growing through him, we won't. If we not growing through him, we won't grow anything. He says that we won't bear the fruit by ourselves. We must look at God as the fertilizer in the, uh, to the garden of our lives. We can plant all the right things and do all the right things. But if we don't have God, we don't fertilize and, separ and, and we don't get fertilized and separate. And do what he says, we won't grow anything. Verse 5, I'm the vine, you're the branch. If you remain in me and I in you, and you will bear much fruit apart from me, you can do nothing. Again, it tells us we won't accomplish anything we, when, we, when we do it ourselves. It is the vine, the, the source, the main thing, the menu. He's the life. He's the team lead. He's the CEO. He's the vine. He's everything regarding change in our life. Every day we can choose God, life, and light. But if we take the opportunity to do everything opposite, we won't grow. Some of us are not achieving anything in our lives because we have forgotten about God. We have let go of our prayer and our worship time. And we have to stop doing what we know how to. We have to start stop doing what we know how to do because we have made time for other things than God. Verse 8, to my Father's glory, you bear much fruit, showing yourself to be my disciple. It says that when we bear fruit, we are showing the world we are his disciples. But when we do what we want, it reacts the way we want. We won't grow and change. We won't bear fruit. Some of us are bearing nothing because we are comfortable with that. But God wants us to grow deeper in him. And to do that, we must dig up the weeds. Dig up the weeds. And we must move. Uh, he must move us to another plant. Meaning, placing us in different situations. And he can do that because he is God. He doesn't have to ask us or tell us. I had some problems I didn't even realize I was dealing with until... He stepped in and showed me a better way. Sometimes we don't see our problems because we have become immune to our bad words, to our bad behavior, to our bad habits. We have become immune to all of it. To get healed for him to teach us, we must be willing to learn. We must be willing to let go of what we taught ourselves and be willing to learn from him. See, God sees us right where we are. We don't have to pretend to be these people who know what we are doing. We can go to God in whatever state we are in, and he will show us the way. John 14 and 6, Jesus said unto him, I'm the way, the truth, then the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. It tells us here Jesus is the truth. He's the life. We don't have any of these things living in us until we start knowing him, until we come to him. Some of us are trying to get ourselves back in line with God. 
and we keep failing because we think we have to do that on our own. All we, all he wants us to do every day is to come to him, read our word, come to him and pray, come to him and worship. But some of us don't even try because we don't have the willpower to say no to the flesh. We have to make the choice. He's not going to make us. Are you willing to change? Are you willing to have him fertilize your life with good things? Psalms 54 and 4, behold, God is my helper. The Lord is the upholder of my life. David realized he couldn't do anything without God. David realized that God held his life in his hands and he couldn't have a life without God. If, if it weren't for God, he wouldn't have gone from a shepherd boy to a king. <clears throat> That's everything in his life was because of God. We must understand that God loves us so much that our lives can't begin until we depend on God. God doesn't want us to depend on anyone else to fix us. I had a tough, I had a tough spot in my life. I thought going to therapy was excellent. Going to on medicine would be great. But what I realized in those things are there to help. Still, my biggest help was when I started gathering around God more. I started reading my word more. I started praying more. And when I did that, that is what helped me through my tough spot. Sometimes it's not what we do, it's who we do it with, friends. When I started doing more with my God, when I started sitting and having an honest conversation with my God, I started seeing a difference. Until we start having honest conversations and authentic moments with God, we won't change. Start a real conversation and intimacy with God and you'll see the difference. Today we talked about God being over our lives and about him being everything to us. Not just someone we know, but God in our lives. We can start seeing the difference. Proverbs 3 tells us something powerful. And this is a verse many of us can quote, but do we apply it? Do we honestly lean on God with our heart and soul? Do we genuinely acknowledge him or just say, I know him? Proverbs 3, 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. God can make the path we are on straight. He can take care of us even in our challenging times. He can do everything we need, but we must depend on him and not medication, not our therapist, not our spouses, not our jobs, but him. We must start making him the head and not the tail. He's the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end. He's everything. But we must acknowledge him on this as this. If you have found yourself in a situation where you haven't acknowledged him, take the time to see the difference. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for everything. We ask you to help us acknowledge you and help us to seek you every day. Lord, we have we have stuff to do and places to go, but we ask you to help us seek you daily. Lord, we love you so much and we are sorry if we have been ignoring you. We're sorry if we refuse to give you honor. We ask that you help us to draw close to you each and every day. In Jesus' name, amen. Our reference, Hebrews 13 and 6. So he can confidently say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear. What can man do to me? Hebrews 13 and 6. Psalms 121 and 2. My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. Psalms 121 and 2. Philippians 4 and 19. And my God will supply every need according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Philippians 4 19. Further reading, Proverbs 29. Leviticus 29. Numbers 11 and 1 Samuel 16. This ends beginning and depending on the on God. On the read time is devotion is 8 minutes and 31 seconds. I pray you all have a blessed day. Remember Jesus loves you. I love you too. Remember to like, subscribe, and follow on any platform. Remember to share with a family member or a friend. If you can, go on social media and share this devotion. If you have a few more minutes, please go on YouTube and like, subscribe. Thank you. Be blessed.